Hi, I'm Pastor Tommy McMurtry from Liberty Baptist in Rock Falls. I want to make a video talking about which Bible you should use as a Christian. If you are newly saved and you decide, hey, I want to start reading my Bible, and you go to a Christian bookstore, you're going to find a whole bunch of different versions. Which one do you get? And when it comes to this subject, this is impossible to cover everything in just a short video. It, it, there's a lot of uh, different opinions out there, uh, and there's a, this is a very you know, hot button issue for a lot of people, but I, I strongly believe that the Bible that you should use is the King James Version of the Bible. I do believe that that is God's uh, perfect word without error for the English speaking people, and so uh, I want to just give you a few reasons why I believe you should use the King James Bible. And again, you'll find a lot of different opinions out there on this, but um, I would encourage you if you're just getting started to get a King James Bible. And here's just a few reasons why from the Bible. So first off, we see in Psalms 12 verse 6, it says, The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. So we see a promise in Psalms that God would preserve his word. And it, it specifies how his words are pure words, as silver tried in the furnace of earth. The word of God is something that can be trusted. It's something that's perfect. If it's not perfect, then it wouldn't be God's word. And so we see in 2 Timothy verse three, uh, chapter 3, verse 16, it says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. So all the scripture, it's given by inspiration and it's been given so the man of God can be perfect or complete, truly furnished. So if we didn't have all of the Bible or if the Bible uh, that we have is flawed or incomplete, then this can't happen. And listen, there's no way that God inspired his word and did all that he can to make sure that, that uh, his words were penned down. He didn't give a promise of preserving his words only for it to just get lost somewhere and us not have what we need. This is a promise we have from God. We see in 2 Peter 1.8, it says, In this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. And we have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, unto the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scriptures of any private interpretation, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. God used man to write the Bible, but the Bible is not man's word, it is God's word. God moved them to write exactly what he wanted. And Peter here, he's talking about when they were with Jesus at the Mount of Transfiguration, and he said, we saw it, we were there. But you know what, we have something better than an eyewitness account. We have the word of God that proves these things. The word of God is better proof, is more proof than someone's eyewitness account. Sometimes people remember things wrong. Sometimes people see things wrong or uh, they, they miss something. But the Word of God, this isn't just man's opinion. It is what God moved them to write. Therefore, the Word of God is perfect. And some say, well, it wasn't the originals, but it's not today. Well, Jesus said in Matthew 5, 17, Think not that I am come to destroy the law of the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Now, why would Jesus specify how none of it, not one jot or tittle is going to pass till all is fulfilled if we weren't going to have God's word until everything came to pass. So where's, where's the proof if we don't have the word of God? It's very clear that we, were, we are always gonna have God's word. Matthew 24, 35 says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. We understand that God cares very much uh, when people mess with his word, if they add to it or take away. It says in Revelation 22, 18, at the very end of the Bible, it says, For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, 
If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things that are written in this book. God does not want us messing with his word. God does not want us altering it in any way. God promised that he would preserve his word. And when we mess with it, it comes with some serious, serious consequences. And you'll find out if you start comparing versions that they are not all the same. We see, for example, that the New International Version, the NIV, a very popular Bible, they leave out entire verses, key verses. And I'll give you just a couple examples real quick. In Acts 8.35, it says, Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. This is the King James Version. And as they went on their way, they came into a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? Verse 37 and Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Verse 38, And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. Now in the NIV, verse 37 is gone. It's just not there. It says, Then Philip began with that very passage of Scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. And as they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What can stand in the way of me being baptized? Then verse 37 is gone, where Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he said, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. That verse is gone. He wants to be baptized, and then it just said, And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. So, Right there, it, they're leaving out a very important verse that shows a person must believe on Christ to be saved before they are baptized. It's just gone. Something's very wrong here. We see in 1 John 5, 7 in our King James Bible, it says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in the earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. This is a very important verse on the Trinity, but in the New International Version, it says, for there are three that testify. That's it for verse seven. Just for there are three that testify. And then it goes to verse eight, the spirit, the water, and the blood, and the three are in agreement. So a very important scripture gone from the NIV. Now both of these can't be the word of God. And the truth is when it comes to this issue of a perfect word of God, there is no other version out there that any even claim is perfect except for the King James Bible. This one's been around for 400, over 400 years. This one has stood this test of time, and I believe that God has used the King James Bible uh, to spark some of the greatest revivals that we've seen in, in the last few hundred years. I believe it's the King James Bi version of the Bible that brought us out of the Dark Ages this is something that we can count on. It's something that has been proven. These newer versions, uh, we can't count on them. The, the fruit of these other versions are not good. When you compare the doctrine of those who are King James only versus those who are not King James only, you see some huge differences. And there's a reason for that because those of us who believe we have a perfect word of God, we allow it to be the final authority. It settles all the disputes. It determines doctrine where people who don't believe in a perfect Bible, they just use whatever translation they like. And then the, and they just kind of pick and choose whatever kind of suits their own personal beliefs, thus making themselves the final authority. And so we, this is, it is a very important thing, and it is a very, uh, there, there's a lot of details that we can go into. It, is, it can be a complicated subject when we're talking about translation and things, and most of us don't know other languages, and we don't know Greek and Hebrew. But at the end of the day, it's very clear when I read my King James Bible that every word of God is important and that it is precious and that there are clear promises that he would preserve his word and that we, we would always have everything that we need. And I strongly believe that uh, for the English-speaking people, we can find that in our King James 
Bible. And I would encourage you, if you're just getting started in your Christian walk, to go and get yourself a King James Bible, not a New King, not a New King James Version, a King James Version of the Bible. Uh, the devil has been attacking the Word of God since the Garden of Eden. It is the Word of God that uh, is the final authority in everything. You know, we are, we're born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the Word of God. You better believe the devil is always going to want to mess with God's words and to try to change them any way that he can. And so thankfully, though, I believe that God has uh, left us and God has miraculously preserved his word. And we have it today in our King James Bible. So go get you one, go read it, and let that settle every argument and be the final authority in your life. Thank you so much for watching.